Hey, it's Dr. Cody Raw with Tech for Psych. I'm in the Mojave Desert today between Nevada and Arizona. Been doing a lot of hiking the last couple of days. And whenever I'm in the desert, I have this feeling of having some sort of mystical experience, hiking around, really enjoying myself. And it got me thinking, a lot of people are interested in seeing brainwaves in that type of experience. And today I wanted to talk about uh, the realities concerning mobile brain imaging and what we're actually doing to solve problems that are coming up with it. And whenever I'm in the wilderness like this, I really start thinking about having um, really important experiences, mystical experiences, going on some sort of vision quest. And I know a lot of people are interested in brain imaging or looking at brain waves and those type of experiences. So what would we ha actually have to accomplish to make sense of brain waves with someone walking through the desert? And I thought it was a good chance to talk about the limitations of EEG technology and also what we're doing to help fix it. So one of the things about neuroscience is that you have to have very specific experimental parameters. Usually people are sitting in a lab within a room with everything very well controlled except the one variable that the experimenters are changing. So for example, if you're measuring someone's brain waves with attention, you'd want, perhaps they're looking at a computer screen, you would want only one thing to change so that if you did see changes in their brainwave signals, you would know that it's correlated with them changing their attention. The problem with having these EEG devices, perhaps when walking through the desert like I have been doing, is that there's gonna be so many variables with it you have a hard time keeping track of what's actually changing the brain waves. So naturally, if you're walking through the desert, there's a lot of things that could affect the signal with these devices. One of the biggest effects would be muscle artifacts. And just in me talking, the muscles that are contracting within my jaw, within my forehead, and within my facial expressions would definitely be picked up with the EEG. That's something that people uh, really try to control for in experimental conditions. And they have to look at all the data and try to get out those artifacts. Another thing that actually changes the EEG signal is where I look with my eyes. Your eyes actually have a little bit of a dipole that will change the electric signal with that the device is picking up. Now when I was thinking about this talk, I wanted to look into, well, do the contractions in your leg muscles or in your arms affect the EEG signal as well? And there's controversy on this, but I did pull up a recent paper in which they put an accelerometer on someone's head as they were walking on a treadmill. And what they found is that as the head was bobbing back and forth, you would expect a regular signal to be picked up on the EEG machine if in fact the stride, the, uh, stride coming from the leg muscles and the arm muscles was affecting the signal. Luckily, they didn't find much. They tried it at different, three different speeds and didn't feel like it actually affected the EEG signal, which is good news because if we can uh, filter out other artifacts that are affecting the EEG signal, um, then that actually getting a good signal with someone walking through the desert like this would uh, be feasible. We just have to figure out a couple of other things. One interesting thing I learned from my neurofeedback course is that uh, electronic devices that have alternating current can affect the EEG signal as well. So if you're indoors, you actually have to be careful about being near computers and other electronic devices. Even if I was walking through the desert and there was a power line, it could affect the EEG signal. Um, in, in America, it actually happens at 50 hertz, and in European countries, it happens at 60 hertz. So a lot of these devices, even this one, have what they call a notch filter to help uh, not acquire that signal from alternating current electronic devices. Another thing that can affect the EEG signal is your heart rate. So EEG is actually a lot like ECG, where you see people get leads on their chest in, in movies or in the hospital, and their heart rate's analyzed. Well, your heart rate, heart rate actually has an electrical impulse that causes the cardiac cells to contract synchronously so that you get good blood flow. And that signal can be picked up on the EEG signal as well. Luckily, we've, got, we've gotten good at identifying that. You use independent component analysis when you break down the EEG signal, and you can see if our heart rate is contaminating the signal. So we've got our heart rate, we've got our eyes moving, we've got uh, muscles moving within our uh, face and jaw that can all affect the EEG signal. So what are we doing to overcome this? Well, there's been proposed a mobile brain body imaging that we would use in order to overcome that. So if I was walking through the desert and just getting EEG signal, you could have things like eye tracking technology, say on Google Glass or a device similar to it. And then you would also have different sensors on your body to track where your arms and legs and uh, face muscles are moving so that you have complete 
sensory integration into a computer that will know those different things that are going on. So the changes in the EEG signal you could correlate. Now that would be a lot of data, but I think eventually we're going to get computers that are fast enough to be able to process that. So people are working on that. and. I think it's going to come along with other more powerful technologies. People are working on portable MRI devices that will be light enough to make into, say, like a helmet that you put on your head. So not only would you just be looking at brain waves, you'd be actually looking at the image of the brain as someone was walking through the desert. Other things that are really going to help out within the near future are improve electrodes on these devices. So there's two things that I think are going to help with um, actually getting a good EEG signal. So actually, one of the best things that with the EEG signal is if you had a chip implanted below the skull, you could record the brain's activity. Obviously, a lot of us don't want to do that, but you could actually pick up brain waves without contamination of the, all these artifacts. In order to get closer to that, we need to have better sensors. So instead of implanting a chip, we're going to do two different things to the sensors within the near future to get a better signal to noise ratio. So what we want to do is actually put microchips within the electrodes themselves that amplify the signal and get rid of a lot of the artifacts before the signal actually makes it to the amplifier within the device to be analyzed. That would really clean up the signal very nicely. Another thing that people have been talking about is actually using 3D printing to improve the actual contact between the skin and the electrode device. So it would be these nanotubules within the electrode surface that pierce through a thin layer of your skin called the stratum corneum. You actually wouldn't actually feel that, but it would actually get through the thin layer of skin that uh, impedes the signal. So you'd improve the amount of signal that's getting to the electrode. So with those two improvements, we should have a much better signal to noise ratio and have a better shot at this total integration experience. Another thing that we'd have to track is the subjective experience of the person walking through the desert. So that somehow they would have to correlate where they were looking, what their mood was, and what their attention was, so that you could correlate that with the EEG signals. As you can tell, it would be very difficult to get all this information into one place to make sense of the EEG signals, but I think in one day we will be there. And those are the challenges that we've laid out, and those are the things that we're trying to improve. Thanks so much for the listen. This is Cody Rawl with Tech for Psych. Talk to you again sometime soon.